we got a big show for you tonight, let me tell you. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. And um, everybody's got them in their icebox. You know, you have any idea where I'm, I'm going with this thing? I'm talking about eggs, right? I haven't done this egg thing in a long time. But, I mean, you can have them for breakfast, you can have them for lunch, you can have them for dinner, you can have them for dessert. We kind of take them for granted, actually. You can, like, boil them, fry them, bake them, poach them. It's kind of like a song, right, Doc? I mean, you can bake them, you can poach them, you can fry them, right? You can do your Isn't thing there a with song them. like that, the egg song? <laughs> Maybe later. I... <laughs> and every culture has their signature egg dish. And uh, my point is you don't have to be, like, a kicked-up gourmet chef to, like, work with eggs. And uh, there are all kinds of international dishes that we also take for granted with eggs. That's why tonight I'm taking the fear out of eggs right here on Emerald Live. I'm going to show you how to make a simple frittata, kind of a little Spanish twist to it with vegetables. I'm going to do my kicked-up version after that of frittata, a little pork fat, of course. <laughs> and then, um, have you guys ever had a scotch egg? Anybody here have had a scotch egg? Yeah? We're going to show everybody how to make these kicked-up scotch eggs. And then a really delicious French and Italian. It's kind of a little combination. We'll talk about that. This garlic soup with poached eggs. Oh, to die for. And then I thought, why not kick up the Zabioni program a little bit with some poached pears, show you how to make that. You know, the holidays, the winter, birthdays, all that stuff. So if you guys are ready, it's uh, Eggs Over Easy right here on Emerald Live. <laughs> Before I start getting egg on my face, give it up for Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. <laughs> Smelling a little eggy over here. How you doing, ladies? All right, let's go into uh, a little bit of history of uh, eggs real quick as we try to do. You know that eggs basically are, they're graded by the USDA. That's them, you know, officials, them egg officials. And uh, generally are sold and graded by weight, weight per pound, which is kind of what makes them the grades. And the grades generally, quality of grades are basically three types. Double A, not to be confused with the triple A that comes and fixes your tire <laughs> when you run over an egg. So double A, then there's the single A, and, uh, and then there's B, which we hardly see in the grocery stores, at least for us. They're usually sold to those people that make them, you know, those beater things and, you know, those... Anyhow, we won't go there. <laughs> Last year, 5.5 billion dozen of eggs in the United States. Think about that. 5.5 billion dozens, that's a whole lot of eggs. But there would be no creme brulee or caramel cup custards without them. There'd be no great brioche. There'd be no simple dish like quiche or my favorite, six or seven pounds of sausage with some scrambled eggs. There would be none of those. There would be no hollandaise sauce without eggs. You know, basically, people take it for granted. Think about all the things that uh, you can do with eggs. We don't even really think about it every day, right? You use them for baking. They're used for emulsifying to make dressings. They're using for coating you know, to make uh, things sheen. They're used for proteins. Great example, like croissants or like brioche or egg bread for binding. They're used for clarification, not only like with stocks, but also winemakers still use egg whites because of the proteins in egg whites to clarify wine in a lot of the wineries. It's just endless how many, how many things that we use for eggs. Brown eggs, white eggs. These are not like badly cooked eggs. <laughs> See, they got that little color to them? Yeah. They're duck eggs. 
Yeah, they're pretty good, actually. Pickled duck eggs. Try them for Christmas. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyhow, we're going to uh, keep egging it up here. We're going to rock out with Doc Gibbs. When we come back, I'm going to show you a simple frittata. Stick around. Doc Gibbs, everybody. <laughs> For everybody. All right. Welcome back. Amber Lagasse kicking up eggs a few notches tonight here. Doc, you got a favorite uh, egg dish that you like? Well, simple. Eggs over easy. Love that. Love omelets. Omelets. Well, you know what, Cliff? It's amazing you say that because a lot of people, I'm going to do this frittata right here. Uh, a lot of places in Spain, which is what they call them, and even in Portuguese, which I'm going to get into that in a little bit. But there's a difference between omelet making and this frittata making. And uh, I'm going to show people that right here. It's a, it's a matter of getting in a lot of air, which eggs are used. In this case, you know, eggs are used a lot in pastry making, cake making, uh, as a leavening agent, another quality of eggs, to, uh, to make it rise naturally. This here, I'm going to start in this nonstick pan with just a little bit of butter. That's ah, a little butter. I'm trying to help the dairy farmers out. <laughs> At least they can count right. <clears throat> Anyhow. <laughs> Don't get me started, Doc. Don't get started on that. <laughs> it's early yet. It's really early yet. Anyhow, you want to kind of let that... I got some asparagus that I peeled. The reason why is because... These are pretty big asparagus, as you can see. This is not peeled. So when they get about this big, if they're not pencil asparagus, you really need to peel them. And you should get a vegetable peeler and peel down towards the, the, uh, the stem of the asparagus, like I have here. That'll make them very tender. What I'm going to do is just put a, like a little rough chop on these things. Oh, you can put a dice. And um, what I'm going to do for this frittata is I'm going to start sauteing these asparagus in a little bit of this butter. Ah, let's add them a little bit more. Why not? You know, what's, what's a few asparagus amongst friends? All right, so we want to start sautéing those in whole butter like that. A little salt, make them happy. They're happy now. <laughs> Fresh ground pepper, happier. <laughs> and, uh, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to, you know, they haven't been blanched. If you want the process to go quicker. But what this does, cooking asparagus like this, it takes a little bit of time, but what happens... See, they're asking me for more butter. You can't see that quite at home. <laughs> but they're in there going... Oh, yeah. Those poor asparagus are in there going, Please, give me more of that butter! So I'm answering them. I'm, yes, you can have it. Take more of it, you know. But what I was saying is that cooking asparagus like this, what's going to happen? See, that's why you guys need to call that... Smell-o-vision people that, yeah. Because we all got it in here. You could feel the love if you were here in New York City. You know, you know. What it's doing is that it's releasing all of these oils and flavors, kind of getting nutty inside of this. And that flavor is going to really kind of fuse, big word, the eggs when we put them in there. Matter of fact, you know how porous eggs are? I won't get into, like, this mathematical, like, scientific stuff, but they, they're, like, very porous, okay? On the outside here, you can't really see them, but there's, like, 11,000 little, you know, dimples, okay? For simple terms, dimples here, okay? Who cares, all right? What I'm trying to tell you is this. Here's a couple of mistakes that people make. A, you can go shop for eggs. Get a cotton, right? Nobody ever really looks at the date of when they're expiring, so most of you, I can see all the faces in here, too. <laughs> most of you are all buying, like, eggs that are getting ready to, you know, go south, as they say. 
Two, you want to store them in your carton. You get those things that come with them, refrigerators that you buy, use them as ice cube trays, okay? I'm serious. They're not good for storing eggs. 35, 40 degrees. Getting back to the dimples that they have, they pick up smells like no other food. Matter of fact, every time around this time of the year when truffle season comes at the restaurants, I'll take a dozen or two dozen of eggs or so, put them in a brown paper bag, and you put one truffle inside of the brown paper bag, a couple of days it's absorbed that truffle flavor. You could do it with mushrooms, all kinds of things. Seriously, try it sometime. Okay, back to the frittata. The asparagus are really happy right now. Now what I'm going to do is this. I've got a, an assortment of wild and exotic mushrooms. You know, wild, that's exactly what they are. They're wild. You go in the woods 21 days after it rains, you go out there picking them up, true story. Or they come cultivated like most of the mushrooms that we can find in grocery stores like shiitake, oyster mushrooms. Those are cultivated. You can grow them in your backyard on a log, whatever. An assortment chopped up. We're going to add those to the mushrooms right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're adding the mushrooms to this. I think really we can get about five or six more things in this pan before we... <laughs> this thing's got plenty of room. It is built for like size. I'm telling you right here. While that's cooking right now, we just added mushrooms. So we've got a... Bam! Excuse me. We had a... <laughs> It's a layering thing. All right, now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna crack some eggs. Hey, it's a real deal. This is a real show. We're cooking on it, you know? We ain't flopping no hard boiled eggs around here, you know? All right, now we got them. Now here's the whole key. You gotta whip some air into them. First of all, we're gonna whisk them. That's on my top 10 gadget list, you know what I'm saying, Doc? Ooh, I love it, man. That and the guica, I'll be happy. <laughs> All right, that's one of Doc's instruments. All right, now we added a little Parmesan cheese. Now look, these eggs, I don't know where you, uh, your chickens are coming from. Where my chickens are coming from, they don't come seasoned, okay? So you gotta kind of season them up. A little salt, a little more pepper. Of course, you can add anything you want in here now. Parsley, chives. You know, I won't go there. Okay, now, little shallots. You could use just onion. <laughs> then we're gonna add the eggs. All right, so what? We're gonna let that go. See, Cliff, different than an omelet. I lost my whisk. Shucks. <laughs> Didn't land on a napkin either. Now, we're gonna let that start cook and get set. Now, back over here, start with a little olive oil in this one. This is kind of the kicked up version of it. Real quick, chorizo sausage, love it. <laughs> Broken up out of the casing, let that brown a little bit, then I'm gonna add a little onion, bell pepper, and of course, about ah, 30 cloves of garlic or so. <laughs> then, Here's what we're gonna do. I took some potatoes diced like this. They're called Brabants. They're diced potatoes. Four or five minutes in boiling water, fork tender, okay? Drained, cooled. Got the chorizo, now I'm gonna add them. You see, those potatoes now are gonna get super happy. Watch this, we're browning the chorizo. Can you smell that? We're gonna add the onion, bell pepper, 40 cloves of garlic. Now look, we're gonna, we're gonna just kind of brown the potatoes, a little salt, a little pepper. Now let me show you this one frittata here. <laughs> they don't even do that at Benny Hanna's anymore. <laughs> All right, look, a little bit of Parmesan cheese on the top like that. We're gonna pop this in the oven, top oven here, the broiler. All right, we'll do it on the top. When we come back, Another knot! Stick around! Fuck it!
Scott Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. Welcome back. Yeah. Just added on some new keys, huh? Yeah. Tata keys. Tata keys on there. That's it. <laughs> if you're just joining us, we are kicking eggs up a few notches tonight. We've got this kicked up, or my kicked up for Tata here. Shadiso, bell pepper, a little onion, some garlic. And then we're trying to brown these potatoes a little bit. You see how nice they're looking here? Okay. Now, what we're going to do, I crack six eggs again in this little bowl. We want to get whisk them and we want to get a little air in there. You know what a lot of people do is they'll put their eggs in a blender. They just put them in a blender, you know. Oh, well, I guess you had to been there. <laughs> so once they're mixed up, let me show you what we're going to do now is we're going to add just a little bit of salt, that seasoning thing. We're going to add some cracked pepper. Hey, maybe we can get fancy, right? Maybe you want to add a little parsley, okay? Maybe you want to add like a little chives, you know? You get the, pe the message, all right. Mix that in there. Now goes in the eggs. My mother does this dish in Portuguese. They call it toltish. Don't ask me what it means, but it's good. So look, now we've got that. We're just going to mix this a little bit. Then, aceguio, or whatever kind of cheese you like. I'm going to add some aceguio cheese here. And then, for this particular one, watch what we're going to do. We're going to put a lid on it. Meanwhile, back in the broiler land, woo -hoo -hoo. check that out. Here's what you do. You can put a plate on it like this. Now, it's a common sense thing here, right? The thing is hot. So, what I generally do is just flip it over like such. You see? Come on. Hide and seek is happening right now. So, what we'll do, doesn't that look great? There you have it right there, folks, okay? Little garnish, little essence. You can also garnish it with just a tiny bit of Parmesan cheese like this, too, okay? There you have the vegetable frittata, okay? There you have it. Now, you guys cut a little bit amongst yourself. You got friends over there, and then you guys can make some friends. Now, look at this. I can't believe that that's stuck. Hmm. Oh, well. <laughs> Guess it isn't going to be like a one zero zero show today. <laughs> All right, now, this is looking good. What I'm going to do is take this one, just put it in the oven for a little bit. All right, get back on there. The steam is what really kind of puffs this up, too. So we'll check on that in a second. Now, for that kicked up frittata that I've got in the oven, if you, like, want to bring it up, like, another notch, because, you know, you're trying to impress someone, you can easily make a simple sauce pecan, or picot, or picanto is what we call it. Stewed tomatoes, onions, a little garlic, bell pepper, celery if you want. Just cook it down. Let the moisture evaporate. Salt and cayenne pepper. That's how simple, I'm, t I'm telling you. All right, so we've got that working. And then for me, I start dreaming about, you know, uh, chorizo and all that kind of stuff. Instantly, with sauce piquant, what comes to mind is some fried oysters on top of that would be really good, too, you know? So. Little sauce piquant. Should he so? This thing's talking to me now. There we go. Let me show you another classic. In Provence, Pots of Italy, they do this soup that they finish with eggs. They actually poach the eggs right in the soup. Oh, oh, that's all I can tell you. I can't go the other beyond oh 
because we're trying to be G tonight. So. You take some good olive oil, like the extra V type, you know? And then what we're going to do is we take a small onion, and we're going to peel this onion. Show you this real quick. Now, we've got the onion peeled. I've got some diced bread crumbs, or diced bread, I should say. Garlic that you just shave, all right? Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to just kind of, I want to show you this quick way to dice an onion, see? Probably seen that a hundred times. So we got a little diced onion. You got to have a little onion, don't you think? Oh, yeah. I'm like an onion freak. So take a little onion in the olive oil and the garlic just shave like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to just simply add salt to season it. And I'm going to kick it up with some cayenne pepper. Oh, yeah. See, the reason why I added the salt and pepper in here right now, you see what it did to the color? Because now I want to add the bread, a couple of cups of breadcrumbs. Then I'm going to add this chicken stock or chicken broth on this. I'm going to go check on our Kicked Up Frittata. This would be a good time for you to go get one of those, you know, frozen things or whatever. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to finish this incredible garlic soup. Stick around. We'll be right back. Back in. All right, Doc Gibbs and Cliff, welcome back. Some strange reason, if you just like fell out of one of those long distant airplane here, you've landed on Emerald Live here. And it's eggs over easy here tonight. We've got this garlic soup, bread soup going on, a little influence of Provence in Italy. We're gonna show, I'm gonna show you that in a little bit. But here, while you were doing whatever you were doing, I decided to drop some oysters. Right. Oh yeah, man. Basically, you know, you get them in them shuck containers. You can either give them a little bath with some milk or buttermilk, little essence, dredge them in some cornmeal. <laughs> Nothing fancy, just some fried eggs with little oysters. All right, look, I'm going to season these with some essence. Remember, any time that you fry something, you want to season them as soon as they come out of the hot oil. Doesn't matter what it is, French fries, chicken, whatever. Season it, because that's when they're vulnerable. <laughs> Just waiting for some spice, you know? What I'm going to do now, I got my sauce piquant is reduced down. I'm going to eliminate the bay leaf. Yeah, you don't want to eat that. that take you a few years to digest. <laughs> then we're going to check on my kicked up frittata. Covered like this, it should be able to... Um, Oh, it's doing a dance. Well, all right. Look at that. Now, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm not taking any chances as the last one. <laughs> get out that plastic spatula, you know what I mean? I have so much fun cooking in my kitchen. 
I'm like all by myself, you know? Sometimes I have like little voices talking to me, you know? That would be the pork fat patrol. So now I'm gonna turn this over. Now this is gonna be a lot darker. Okay, this is gonna be a lot darker than our frittata. And it should be a little bit thinner too. You see that? Now, let me show you how we're gonna finish this one. <laughs> I just kill myself sometimes. Well, you could use more of that Asagio cheese, Asiago cheese, mostly from Italy. You could use great Parmesan on top like this. But let me tell you, when you got, you want to kick it up a couple of notches, right? Here's what you do. You take that sauce piquant, and you just kind of, you can feel the love, right? All right, look. So we take that. Oh. Ah, uh, why not, right? Yeah. Bam! I'm sorry! Hey, 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 hey! A little parsley like that, Hilda would be happy. And then what I do, just to impress a few of my friends, like decorating a snowman, you see, like, there's the buttons, you know? Just kind of put the eyeballs over here. Oh, he's got feet, Hilda, look! Whatever, you know, whatever turns you on, it just... I like to just put a few fried oysters like this. And uh, there you have the kicked up frittata right there, okay? All right, we gotta be fair. Now, our soup. As the chicken starts, starts to evaporate, it's intensifying the flavor. The bread, you see it's swollen like that, it's getting all mushy. That's when you bring out the boat motor like this. And you just give it a little attitude adjustment. You know, look. See? Tame it down a little bit. We're, what we're doing is we're pureeing this. And hey, you probably haven't used your boat motor in six months anyhow. <laughs> give it an oil change and get it out of the cabinet, you know? Now, all right, we got that happy. All right, we're going to turn it off. <laughs> we're going to season it after we taste it. Seriously thinking about doing this for a living. I'm going to let that simmer a little bit because I want to show you something real quick. In Britain, in these pubs, even in supermarkets, you can find these things called scotch eggs. Like scratch your head. What? Yeah, I said, uh, you know, one of our colleagues, uh, Trevor, I said, Trevor, you know what? And I went over, anyhow, scotch eggs. Check this out. You're always looking what to do with eggs. Hard boil them. Yeah, see? You can tell a hard boil. Watch. This is a hot, this is your brain on hard boil eggs. See? Ain't going anywhere. This is your brain on a raw egg. Except, this is your brain. All right, Jill. Don't worry, don't worry. Let it fall. Yes! Lettuce is in the head, followed by rubber band in the stretch. Here they come. All right, so. We're having an egg race. Yolk is definitely ahead. Now, watch this. You take some breakfast sausage, right? And you take them out of those casings. You know, well, we won't go there. All right, breakfast sausage. Little bit of salt. Bam! Some cayenne pepper or some essence kicked up, right? Little water for your hand. Then you mix this. You with me so far? Yeah. All right, watch. Now, you're supposed to divide the mixture in like quarters. All right, so I can eyeball this. Watch again. Water in the old hand. Flat, flat, flat. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, I had no crayons when I was a kid, you know? <laughs> All we had was pork sausage. You take a hard boiled egg like this. You take a hard boiled egg like this, you flatten it out. It's kind of like hide and seek. You play hide the egg now, you know? 
What you do is you just form this around the egg like that. You see? Doesn't that look great? All right, patty cake, patty cake. Now what we're going to do after we do them, flour, egg wash, and breadcrumbs. When we come back, another knot. Stick around. <laughs> We got the kicked up frittata around with sauce piquant. We got the eggs. Ladies, you're all right over there? Very well, thank you. 350, 360 degrees, vegetable oil. After we uh, flour, seasoned, of course. Egg wash, seasoned, of course. Breadcrumbs. Seasoned, of course. You can feel the love in here. It's unbelievable. <laughs> we put them inside of either a pot or a little fry basket or one of them yandy dandy ones that you have. See, they get nice and golden brown. Now, these are kind of like sinkers, if you know what I mean. So they're not going to be like floating on there like, you know, some angels on horseback or something. You know what I mean? You know, this is like, you know, scotch eggs, you know. It's like manly eggs, you know. They serve them with like pickles and mustard, so you figure it out. Oh, I love that. All right, now, while we're doing that, Come back over here to the boat motor real quick. Make sure all the bread is nice and pureed with the boat motor inside of the soup. Very simple, but you ought to taste it. Incredible. When we're going to finish this now, here's how we're going to finish it. A little bit of Parmesan cheese. Okay. Then here's the trick. Wait. Can't overcook them scotch eggs. All right, I may need like six or seven people to hold a plate when I put these on here. These are like goose eggs. Look good, huh? I gotta show you this real quick. I gotta show you this real quick. Watch, if you cut them in half, watch this. Look at this. See that? So they kind of serve that like this. I like the uh, pumari mustard type over here under the side, right? Then they serve a couple of them gherkins like that. Okay? There you have it, scotched eggs, all right? Try kicking that up. Back over here in soup land, here's what we're going to do. When you're ready to finish this, if you're going to make this the day before, which you can, garlic soup, oh, come on, right? You could do it up to this point. Then the next day when you want to, you know, do a little garlic soup for the family, one egg at a time. Show you again. Don't want to break it up. One egg at a time right in there. Oh, yeah, come on. Give me a break, right? Can you imagine such a thing? Poached eggs in garlic soup like this? <laughs> what are the other late night shows doing, right? <laughs> All right, so we're going to let that poach. We could add a little bit of chives if you want at this point. You could add some parsley. While that's like poaching, I'm going to show you another egg component, the dessert, usually done in Italy, called zabioni. In France, it's zabion, right? It's with eggs. Watch this. We're going to set up a double boiler. That means I don't got one of those fancy ones right now, okay? Santa, miss me. Okay? Yeah, I'm not happy about it either. Yeah, I know. 
Or either that or Bobby Flay stole it, one or the other. I don't know. <laughs> now, four egg yolks and sugar. And then you use a sweet wine. Generally, this is made with Marsala wine. You could use port wine. You could use Sauterne. You could use Sherry, okay? You could use Madeira. I'm going to use a little bit of... Well, you got to have the right proportion. Now watch. I'm going to whisk this over the double boiler. When you're working with this double boiler, you got to be very careful. Use a towel. Take it in and off the heat like this because you don't want to scramble the eggs, just like you're making a hollandaise sauce. You got to keep whisking it until it gets nice and frothy, okay? You almost be able to blow a rose in there. You never heard of that? It's them people talking in my head again. In this pot right over here, I'm going to add water and honey and I'm gonna peel these Bosch pears because they're cool right now, these Bosch pears. Yeah, they're only like 68 bucks for two, you know? <laughs> I'm gonna peel those, cut them in half, and I'm gonna poach them in that water and honey and a little vanilla bean. When we come back, another knot, stick around! <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. All right, Scottish eggs on the table, garlic soup with poached eggs ready to go. Here's how I like to serve it. Take the broth like that. See how nice? It's not too heavy. And then you just kind of do one poached egg like that right in the center. Okay, see that? A Little bit of Parmesan cheese. And then if you want to garnish with more chives, more parsley, whatever, Sometimes in Provence, what they'll do is they'll take that good extra V uh, oil and they'll just do a little drizzle of that oil like that. And that's the presentation of that, the garlic soup with poached eggs, okay? <laughs> All right, now, I had a question from Adrian, who's sitting over here at the food bar, during the commercial break of weather. This dessert, the zabion, really could be done by people that maybe don't do a lot of cooking, right? And I told her what the biggest mistake is is that people have the water on too high and they try to scramble the eggs. Easy. Low temperature, water. Remember I was telling you about that egg? You see how thick it is? I've just whisked this. Watch. I know you're going to think this is crazy, but hey, it won't be the first time. Watch. You see that rose petal in there? Hollandaise, Zabion, you can do that, it's thick enough. That's my little trick. Now, I've got water, I told you. Then we're gonna add honey, okay? And then we're gonna take a vanilla bean, split it, and put it in there. Then you peel these Bosch pears, cut them in half, you can scoop out the center of the seed with this. You put them in there for about six or eight minutes to their fork tender. Here's what I like to do. Cool them down, simple, simple, simple dessert. Then what I like to do is just get a plate like this. And then you can just, see the vanilla bean is still in there? What you can do, Adrian, is you can just fan, just like this on the plate, your poached pear, okay? See how simple that is? Then your zabion, that's the thickness of it. You can do this on all kinds of fruits. I like to just do a little bit of zabion like this, let it run on the plate. Good, I'm gonna let you taste that. Don't worry, there's only like 50, 60 million people watching this. <laughs> wow. Isn't that good? Fantastic. If it's too thick, you can always add a little bit of Marcella wine or whatever wine you're using. And then I just take a little bit of fresh mint like that. Zabion with poached pear on the old egg show, okay? 
Hey, I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. I'm Emma Lugosi. See you tomorrow, everybody. Yeah.